Hello everybody, welcome back. Today we're going to be doing our final shear moment diagram problem for now. Uh, and this problem is going to be combining what we learned in our previous two videos, which was the relationship method and the internal cut method to solve these problems efficiently. So we're going to combine both of these to help us solve this, right? So the problem goes, draw the shear moment diagram for the beam. And we have the pin and roller supported beam with an external distributed load of triangular shape here and an external moment applied at the end. First thing we always need to do for these problems is find our reactions. So we're going to take a Y for that pin, B Y for the roller, and we're also going to want to find F R to make our lives a little bit easier created by this distributed load. So how do we find F R? We remember this from before. We're going to take half since it's triangular. We're going to take the peak of that distributed load, which is 50 pounds per feet and multiply by the span it covers, which is nine feet. Solving that we're left with 225 pounds. And then next we can take the summation of moment at A equal to zero. And we do this so we can solve for the reaction at B here. What we need is this distance between the pin and the distributed loads resultant force, which is going to be two thirds of that span, which is going to be six feet. Okay. So the first thing we can do is write that it's going to be negative because it's going in a clockwise rotation based on where A is. And we have this six feet away from it. And then next is the BY reaction, which is going to be nine feet away. And that external moment applied to creating a clockwise motion is 200 pounds per feet. Solving for BY, we are left with 172.2 pounds. Then lastly, we can do the easy part, which is take summation of forces at Y to find that AY component. So we have AY minus the resultant force plus the reaction we just solved for, which was 172. 0.2 pounds, giving a y equal to 52.8 pounds. Now let's plug all of this into our drawing and our diagram so that we can actually move on with the problem. Okay, now we have everything added. Uh, the first thing we can point out is that this reaction is going to create a positive jump in our shear diagram. So we can add a point right about here and say that it's going to be starting at 52.8 at this point A. Next, we can divide our sections up. So we have section one for this distributed load, and then we have section two for where the distributed load ends and leads off into that external moment, okay? So let's try and solve for section one first. What am I looking at? What should I do? Should I try and take the relationship uh, and calculate the area underneath, or is it better to take internal forces and take a cut? Well, I think it would be better to take an internal cut whenever you have a distributed load of the triangular shape. And this is because it becomes very difficult to calculate your areas underneath these curves uh, based on quadratic and cubic functions, right? So it's much easier to have a function to work with in order to plug in values to solve for points, such as when shear is equal to zero, and then you can use that to solve for your apex in that moment diagram if there is one. So let's take that cut and see what we're looking at. All right, so now we have this internal cut made and you can see that our variables are represented with the subscript C just to represent our arbitrary cut. And we have a trick to this problem because we have our cut as a function of X, but now our distributed load is also a function of W, right? W is going to change as you go further along the span. Why is that? It's because it's a triangular load and we start at zero and we increase until we reach 50 pounds per feet at a span of nine feet. So what can we do? We know we need to solve for FR, but in order to solve for FR, we need to find out what W is or how we can solve for a value of W. Well, since we don't know what it is specifically, we can create a function for W based on X using the relationship we have from our previously known distributed load. So if we know that W will equal 50 when X is equal to nine, we have the relationship, right? So let's say W over X is equal to 50 over nine. So if we isolate for W, we can solve for a function of X, which would be 5.55 X. Now this is helpful because we're working in terms of X, meaning that we can use this value to plug into future functions. The first one would be FR. We solve for FR based on our rules before. We have half because it's triangular. We have the W, which would be, you know, our height of that distributed load at any point based on X, which is 5.55X. 
and then the span it covers, which is x. So this is going to give us a second degree function of 2.78x squared for fr. And now we can proceed as we normally would, except now we have fr as a second degree function. So what are we going to do? Let's take fy and solve for that shear. This is going to give us our shear function. So first we take this vc, which is going to be negative based on our convention. We have the negative 2.78x squared for fr, and then the ay, which we solved for previously, which is 52.8 pounds. Solving for v, we have a function of negative 2.78x squared plus 52.8. Now, what can we do? What we can do here is first solve for our critical point. So we know we, ha we have a critical point at x equals nine, because that is the last point where our function is going to work for the spin. So when x is equal to nine, we have v equal to negative 2.78 plugging nine squared plus 52.8. That means that v at x equals 9 will equal negative 172.2 pounds. And we can plot that point just around right there, negative 172.2 pounds. But what's another critical point here? We have another critical point for when shear is equal to 0. How do I know that shear is going to equal 0? Well, I know we're going to have a quadratic curve coming down to meet that negative 172.2 from that 52.8. So let's find out where that shear is. How am I going to do that? I'm going to plug in for v equals to 0 in our function. That will give us an x value for where that 0 shear will be. So what is that going to mean? We have 0 plugging into our function right here is equal to negative 2.78x squared plus 52.8. Solving for that, you're going to be left with x equals to negative or positive 4.358 feet. And we obviously are going to take that positive value because we cannot have a negative distance, right? So we know that that zero point of shear is going to be somewhere here at 4.358 feet. So now let's draw what this shear diagram will look like so that we can work further into the problem. All right, so now I have the shear diagram solved for as we talked about before. The next thing we can go ahead and do is solve for our moment function. And the way to do this would be to take the summation of moment at our cut equals to zero, remembering our sign convention, obviously. And we have obviously moment in the positive direction plus the fr, which we solved for previously, which is 2.78x squared. But what is the distance away that we should be looking at? Well, if we're taking our reference point at the cut c, then that means this distance here is the distance away from that fr. So that would be one third of x, since it's carrying over the same rules from our distributed uh, triangular load, right? So we have one over three x for that distance away from the moment arm. We also have the ay, which we solved for before as well, which is 52.8, and that's always going to be a distance x away. So then isolating for a moment at c, we're gonna be left with the function 0.926x cubed plus 52.8x. Now there's a lot of things we can do with this function, but the first thing we need to know is that since we have a shear of zero here, we're remembering our rules from before. When shear is equal to zero, that means the slope of our moment diagram is also going to be zero. That means it's gonna be an apex or a critical point in our problem. So what we're gonna do is state that dm at dx is equal to zero at that point as well, at 4.358 feet. So let's plug in 4.358 feet into our moment calculation. So moment at C 
at x equals to 4.358 is going to equal the value of 153.46 pounds per feet. And that value will end up right about there. The next thing we need to do is solve for that next critical point, which would be at x equals to 9 feet. Like we did previously, we always take that endpoint of where our function is no longer uh, reliable because the distributed load's ending, meaning we cannot continue with that function into the next span. So at x equals to 9 feet, we are also going to plug in for that critical value. So at moment C, at x equals to 9 feet, using this function that we solved for, we're going to be left with a value of approximately negative 200 pounds per feet. All right, so now I've went ahead and added the moment section to our problem. The last thing I need to do is just solve for our second section, which is going to be for shear and moment. And this is actually pretty simple. We're just going to take section 2 which is this area without any load applied to it, except for the external moment. And we need to notice that we first have a jump created by that reaction at By, and that's gonna be in the positive direction. So if we take the difference here and add to negative 172.2, we add that reaction, we can actually see that it's gonna come out to zero. So what does this mean? This means that we have zero across the entire section. But why does this make sense? If we look at our rules, we can see that the area under the distributed load is going to equal difference in shear. We have no distributed load applied to the beam, which means there's going to be no difference in shear. This also means since we just solved for zero here, zero is going to be constant throughout the entire section. All right. So moving on to the moment section, we also need to consider the same rules, right? If we have no area underneath this shear diagram, this means there will be no difference in moment as well. So what does this mean? This means that we're going to have negative 200 as a constant value throughout the entire span of that section. However, the last thing we need to consider is that jump created by the 200 pound per foot moment applied at the end, meaning that it's going to bring this section back to zero right at the very end. Okay. So just to write it down, just so that we're not confused, we have 200 plus 200 bringing us back to zero. And that's the end of the problem. Uh, this video should be pretty helpful since it combines both of what we learned from our previous two videos. Uh, and if you have any questions about it, just please let me know in the comments. All right, so I hope this helped.